I think the advantage that people moving into an analyst career at this point have is that... Welcome everyone back to another episode of What's New at CFI. Today we are talking to Sebastian, better known as Seb, to me and our CFI team. And we're going to talk today about chat GPT for data analysis. How's it going, Seb? How's chat GPT doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, th this course was an interesting one. It's it's um, obviously we've been using ChatGPT in various courses to look at how you can be faster as an analyst and be more efficient. And so this course specifically looks at how we use ChatGPT to make you faster in data analysis. So that can be anything from um, helping us interpret charts tables of data, transform those tables into actual data if, if we're dealing with images, for example. Um, ChatGPT is great at giving us instructions on how to complete data analysis tasks. Um, and the tool's really getting better literally every month. There are new updates to these to these things and other AI tools that, that can really help us be more efficient in our work as analysts. Yeah, I think I'm one of very few people that don't and have not yet quite liberally used ChatGPT. I think I've maybe like experimented with it here and there and doing maybe like first drafts of mainly text, mm -hmm. but I've never given it data to work with or anything. So when I take this course, that'll be my first time trying it. But if you could say just a couple key points, like what do you think are the main benefits of using tools like ChatGPT for data analysis instead of just cranking it out on one's own? Mm -hmm. I think in most use cases, it's really just getting you the first 50% of the way through a task a lot faster than you might do yourself. So for, for most purposes, it's not going to give you a complete end product of the thing you want, especially as a lot of products uh, projects require numerous different steps. These tools aren't yet great at kind of taking a whole project brief, breaking it down into necessary steps, completing them one after the other. They really need you to give them sp very specific blocks of tasks to complete. And so by giving it those one by one, you're able to kind of work through each one much faster than you otherwise could, gets you halfway there, then you can review it and kind of tweak it to do exactly what you need it to do. When I say you could basically take any project and break it up into discrete tasks, mm -hmm. you can have probably more the routine kind of more like repetitive, very mechanical tasks. Chat GPT yeah. could, could probably do with a high degree of confidence, it sounds like. Exactly. The, the, the more you can break your task down into a some kind of logical task that it, it can come out with a yes or no answer um, or this is right, this is wrong, the more it's going to be able to to um, to, to be successful at that task. Um, the, the other benefit I would say of, of using these tools is that whilst you need some kind of domain knowledge or or knowledge of the tool that you're working with in order to sense check and evaluate the output that these tools have given you. What they do enable you to do is to kind of work on the boundaries of your domain knowledge. And I'll give you an example is, so I've done most of my coding in, well, back in the day was in VBA, more recently, things like Python and then other languages uh, using with data for like SQL. Um, and I don't necessarily know how to write those uh, algorithms or code in other languages. For example, if I'm working in Google Sheets one day and I need to write something in Google, Google Apps Script, I don't know that language, but I know enough about it to read it and interpret it. It's kind of like when you learn a language, reading it is easier than writing it. It sounds a lot like me with VBA back in my DCM days. Yeah. I could read it. I can't write it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So what the, what ChatGPT can do for you is you can pass it a some code in Python and say, can you rewrite this logic, but in Google Apps Script? So now it does the writing portion for me. And all I need to do is a quick sense check to, to make sure that the logic and the flow of, of this code is doing what I expect. And then I'm able to 
um, to test it for errors. Um, and it just allows me to work much faster in tools and, and domains at the borders of my knowledge. So it sounds like ChatGPT can handle all sorts of different types of data. So I'm familiar with working with just text data and chat GPT seems to be pretty darn good at that. But it sounds like it also does Excel, it does uh, coding, DBA. Mm -hmm. What what are like what is the whole set of different types of data that chat GPT can work with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it can work with most data types that uh, analysts are working with day in, day out. There's actually a mode in chat GPT called data analysis or data interpreter. And um it's that really allows ChatGPT to think in terms of numbers and in terms of data and analysis. Um, when you think of ChatGPT, normally you're inputting text and you're getting text back. That was kind of version one, let's say. And so it's a that, that's why they call it a language model. Is because it's interpreting your text and giving you a text answer in return. So in order to do all this data analysis stuff that it's now able to do, which includes at a very basic level the ability to count things, the ability to calculate statistics, the ability to do arithmetic um, and so on. That's where this data analysis module comes in. And so as well as being able to think in terms of data, they've also allowed it to work with different data types. So that might be uh, images of tables or images of charts. It might be data tables. So what we think of as, as more structured data. It might be a, an Excel file or a CSV file. Um, oh, the dreaded CSV file. <laughs> yeah, or, or even um, text that happens to have some data in it. And so it's quite good at extracting those data points from the text. And So with that in mind, then, what do you think ChatGPT is particularly good at? And what do you think it's not so good at, where it could use some improvements in? Mm -hmm. I think I would frame it in terms of for, for me, the tasks that it's good at are the ones that you prompted well for. And so I'll go back to the point I made earlier about breaking tasks down. So it's very easy to throw a task at ChatGPT and say, OK, I want to do this analysis. Think about X, Y, Z. Once you've done this, perform these two extra steps. And then once you finish that, add this thing on the end. Um, ChatGPT and, and all the other AI tools will perform a lot better if you break that down. So, so communicating like step one first, saying like, I'd like you to organize this data table with uh, these types of columns um, yeah. and such and such. And then you wait for that result to come back, review it, and then give it the next step. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of saying like, here are my 10 steps I'd like you to perform. Like, yeah. here's the raw data. This is the end product that I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. It's instead of doing it in one step, you're much better off doing one step at a time because you'll end yeah. up with a better product. Yeah, exactly. So you're basically supervising it in a way. Yeah. And so you may know all the steps that are going to come next, but kind of hold them back. Do step but one. But ChatGPT doesn't, right? And then, yeah. No. But what we will see with AI models uh, going forward is that we'll start to work with, say, an AI which manages that process. So it, you might have a central AI bot, which talks to the first bot and says, OK, please complete this task. Once that task is done, it will send the task and the, and the new data to the second bot, which will say, OK, now perform step two. And then the, to the third one, please perform step three. And so you won't have to do that manual intervention between each step. You'll have another AI, which does all that for you. Wow. And, and, and that's, so that's already happening. So. Well, given all of those things, I guess the question that it's been it's come up a lot in the past, but I think it's probably more topical than ever is just, do you think that these tools will eventually replace most analysts? Just like the cashiers that we see at like a Whole Foods checkout, they're all replaced by automatic self checkouts. Mm -hmm. It sounds like when we do, when we're able to break things down step by step and a bot comes in, Mm -hmm. for each step of the way to make sure that we are getting there with um, with as much precision as we can. Yeah. Does the fear of, you know, analysts being replaced with AI, does that become more and more real? Yeah, I, I think there's certainly a danger of that in the future. Um, I would say for now, the the reality is that 
it's just making analysts faster and more efficient. Um, so I think it's inevitable that at some point that that results in particularly more junior roles, mm -hmm. um, perhaps disappearing, but which just means if you are a junior analyst who knows how to use these tools, you're going to be infinitely more productive than a mm -hmm. senior analyst who has who not. 20 years on the job who hasn't bothered to learn these skills. So th that's why I would say it, it, it kind of depends and it's really on us to be the ones to, to learn these skills. Yeah, it sounds like right now um, we're at a stage where you're, the machine is only, it's good. the AI is as only as smart as its operator. And so yeah. if you could get ramped up on how to use chat GPT now, you could really stand out in many different ways. Yeah. And I would say the, I think the advantage people moving into an analyst um, career at this point have is that they can be using these tools from the start. So these tools are going to be embedded in the way they work. There is no changing the way that you operate or changing the way that you do your analysis 20 years into into your career. They will always have been part of it. So it's definitely for us it's a little different. Like we're a couple that were several years into our careers. Mm -hmm. So we won't it won't be necessarily something that we have from the get-go. We'll have but yeah. for now at least I've kind of absorbed it into the task of just generally like first drafts of emails or um, that type of stuff that I want help with. What's your favorite thing to use ChatGPT for these days? I, I would say rather than a specific use, a specific thing that I do with it is there's this one shortcut I use every single day with ChatGPT. So, it, and it's actually a Windows shortcut. I use Shift Windows S. And that allows me to take a snippet of any area of my screen that I'm working with. And so I can very quickly just snip that part of the screen, throw it into ChatGPT. And whether it's a text image, it's a PDF, it's a chart, it's a website, anything, I can, I've got a quick way of throwing that information into ChatGPT. And oh, wait, so like the keyboard shortcut is programmed to send it automatically to ChatGPT? No, 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 it's not. So okay. shift, <laughs> shift Windows S will snip the screen and then yeah. I paste it into ChatGPT. Oh, wow. And I, well, I must use that uh, 30, 40 times every day. And then it knows what to do with it. You've trained. Well, it's just, it, then you have whatever information you wanted in ChatGPT. And so oh, I see it's, it's oh, that's to, a great idea. It's, it's able to interpret your image, whether that's data in tabular form, whether it's a chart, an image, a website, um, you can then ask it anything it wants and it will extract the text or whatever you're looking at from the image. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Maybe it's like, I, I suppose I could just take some screenshots of, let's say, like my calendar and say like, hey, ChatGPT, can you summarize my week coming ahead? And exactly. then... Absolutely, yeah. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is going to conclude our episode for what's new at CFI today. But clearly I myself have learned a lot about what ChatGPT can do in data analysis. And I'm going to go and try it out for myself right now. Yeah, let me know how it goes. I guess as always. Thanks, Mia. And we will see you again very soon. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.